I have the key data in my charts. I have the mass of each metal and they were very close to the same number, about 58. Um, the initial temperature, I wanted to show you guys a little trick here since they, they all started at that 99.0 degrees. I wrote it one time and I'm gonna go over until I see the uh, cross mark and I'm gonna pull that down and that's gonna copy what's in that box all the way down. Okay, so that's just one little trick to make your life a little easier. I have the final temperature of the water for each metal right here. And um, the final temperature of the water was equal to the final temperature of the metal. That was the purpose of putting the hot metal in the water so that they would come to the same final temperature. And they all started in boiling water, so they all started at 99. Here's another trick. We're gonna put an equation into this column to find the change in temperature. So the change in temperature is equal to um, when you put an equal sign in sheets, it's going to wait for you to give it an equation. So it's the final minus the initial, and I'm going to hit enter. And the temperature went down 61 degrees in the metal. Okay, that's what the negative is telling us. You can have a negative change in temperature. And just like I did for over here, the temperature, I'm going to use the same thing for the change in temp go to the bottom right hand corner and it will copy that equation row for row and it should calculate all of the changes for us. Okay, so we can see which one changed the least and which one changed the most very easily. So the one that changed the most was our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the tin changed the most in temperature and copper changed the least. We'll see how that relates to water down here. Okay, so the mass of our water was, since I put distilled water, it's basically pure water, um, you know, there's always some impurities, but basically pure water, and it was 30.00 milliliters, the density of water is one gram per milliliter, so we have 30 grams. So that's where this 30 comes from, drag that down. So now all of these are 30. For the final temperature of the water, that was equal to the final temperature of the metal. So I wanted to show you another trick. I'm gonna hit equals here, and I'm gonna select this um, box because they are the same iron metal and the water with iron in it came to the same temperature. So hit enter and 38, and let's see if it will copy and paste all that down just like we did up there. Yep, see, so it's copied all um, of the ones below it down here. And now I have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I can probably copy this equation and paste it. Let's see if I can. Control C, Control V. Yes, I can. So I just copied and pasted this box with the equation down here, and it automatically, like you can see that it's doing it correctly. When you select it, it is taking E11, so that's E11 right here, and it is subtracting d11 and the temperature of the water went up so now we have a positive change so let's go over to the corner and drag that down so the water went up the most with the copper so copper released more energy into the water than the tin the tin um, increased the temperature of the water the least so specific heat and heat um, what we're trying to get to here is the specific heat of the metals. We can Google them, and we will um, Google specific heat of the metals, but our job is to calculate them. And this is just something that you guys should know. If you don't remember it, you will hopefully by the end of the year, we're going to talk about the specific heat of water a lot. It's 4.18, and I believe it might even be given on the reference sheet for AP Chem. Okay, so it's 4.18, that's just like a given. Everybody knows the specific heat of water, it's 4.18. Okay, so I'm gonna drag that down here. So what I have now is I have the mass of the water in my cup, I have the change in temperature of the water in my cup, and I have the specific heat of water. So I can very easily calculate Q. So what we're gonna calculate is our Q value. Remember Q is heat, and we can find the heat that went into the water by taking the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times delta T of the water. And we know all of these values from our data table over there so we can plug in the equation and find Q of the water. When we do that, 
what we're really finding is two values. So our system, what we're worried about is actually the metal and we're trying to find specific heat, CP of the metal. The heat that came out, Q of the metal, is the exact same heat that went into the water. So we just found Q of the water. So from the water's perspective, it was taking in Q. Okay, and for the metal, it was releasing Q. So Q H2O is going to equal Q metal, but they are opposite signs. So we have to put a negative in front of the heat of the metal because it's going um, out. Okay, so over here, I can plug an equation in. I'm gonna put equals the heat. Remember it was MCAT, it's equal to the mass. That's this column times we use the asterisk for times, the specific heat, I'm gonna enter this last because you can multiply it in any order, times delta T times the specific heat. Okay, and let's hit enter and see what we get. So it was 1,366.86 joules for iron. And let's copy that equation all the way down so we'll know how much heat, um, this is the water, put into the water. Okay, and then up here, we can add a column for heat, which is Q, the letter Q, you know, of course that means heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and format this. So I want this to be ordered and the top one I'm gonna fill and make bold. There we go. So the heat um, that went into sorry, came out of the metal up here, went into the water, I'm gonna put equals the negative of this box and hit enter, bam. So you guys can see, hopefully, this is really sneaky, the negative delta T and the negative heat are gonna cancel out. So when we calculate specific heat of our metals, we won't get a, specific, a negative specific heat. And come over to the bottom right until you get the crosshair thing and drag that down to copy all the way down. So this is the heat that came out of each metal. Pretty cool, right? So now what we can find is the specific heat of each metal using the same equation, but this time for the metal. And we know the mass of each metal. We know the temperature change of each metal. I can rearrange, and we just found the heat of the metals. I can rearrange this equation solving for CP CP, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by M delta T. They cancel out. So specific heat is equal to the heat of the metal over the mass times change in temperature of our metal. So we're going to plug in these values for each different metal and we'll find their individual specific heat into our sheet over here we're going to have the specific heat of our metal and it's not typing the heat of our metal that's going to be in joules per gram celsius degrees celsius okay and i'm going to call this the calculated specific heat because we're going to look up the actual specific heats in a second and i'm setting it off a little bit to the side um, because this is probably the most important thing. This is the reason we were doing the lab, right? Okay, so let's add our borders. I'm gonna copy and paste this guy over here. And it's, this time it's not calculated, it's the accepted value. So um, accepted or actual specific heat in joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay, little formatting. Make it bold. Okay, so we said we were gonna take the Q. So this equals, so we have Q divided by, in parentheses, it's gonna be the quantity of the mass times the change in temperature in parentheses. And let's see what we have for specific heat, 0.385. Okay, so I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna drag this down 
and it's going to calculate the specific heat for all of my metals. And then we can look up the actual and compare the two. I'm going to show you guys another trick. So in all of our measurements, we had, um, we're multiplying and dividing, so we're going to use those sig fig rules. Um, we had three sig figs, so I actually want to round this to the uh, thousandths place. So I'm going to go to format, number, and whoops, go to number. Um, this one is hundredths, so go down to more, more number format, and I want, of course, there is no thousandths place. Well, darn, okay, let's see if this works. Zero, zero. Apply. Perfect, so it already rounded it for us. Okay, let's look up the accepted values for the specific heat of iron. The specific heat of iron is 0 0.444. Okay, the specific heat of 10 SN. Um, actually, zinc and copper are here. Zinc is 0 0.39. Zinc is going to be 0 0.39. That is not as precise as I would like, but we're going to go with it. And copper is 0 0.385. 0 0.385. Okay, so that's kind of strange. It looks like this one was higher, um, and this one was, sorry, our measurement here was lower than actual, and here it was higher than actual. So we'll have to do some error analysis and see what happened there. And let's lastly look up 10 and see what its specific heat is. 10 is 0 0.21. Okay, and it actually looks like 0 0.217. Okay, I'm going to put 0 0.21 for now and we will uh, gather more details later. All right, so here's our calculated. Here is the accepted value. You guys are going to do a uh, percent error. You need to look up the equation on that if you need it. If you remember it, go ahead and calculate that. And we're going to do some error analysis and conclusion questions.